Welcome back to that last summary of the course reinforcement learning, which will put an end to this reinforcement learning course. So what did we cover during the last couple of lectures and exercises? We already have wrapped up on the lookup table based approaches during an intermediate summary, where we have seen that with dynamic programming, TD, Zaza approaches, and so on, we could really cover the entire reinforcement learning categories here in between model-based, value-based, and policy-based reinforcement learning solutions. With function approximation, we tried to transfer these ideas from discrete state and action spaces to continuous state and action spaces, first using value-based prediction and control, and then during the last couple of lectures using policy gradient theorems, we also introduced policy-based prediction and control using function approximation and then also heavily focused on this intermediate area here where we put together an actor and a critic to make use of both worlds policy-based and value-based reinforcement learning. We didn't went much into model-based or model-assistant reinforcement learning for the continuous state and action space using function approximations. You may remember the Dyna framework, for example, which we have introduced at the end of the lookup table based approaches. So these kinds of approaches, which also bring in a model, can be also directly, straightforwardly uh, transferred to the function approximator case. So that's why we didn't went into them again. So we really covered a lot of ground. However, uh, we can say that there are still a lot of very interesting reinforcement learning topics which couldn't be covered in this uh, introduction to reinforcement learning course. Yeah, one interesting topic is safety. Safety is basically related to questions like how can we ensure that an agent is always above a minimum performance or from a classical control point of view how can we avoid certain state action combinations so how can we comply with state action constraints. So if you recall the entire reinforcement learning framework, which we have addressed during the last couple of lectures, there was not really a specific point where we could bring in such state and action constraints, right? That was not not really an intuitive part of the reinforcement learning problem, which or problems which we have defined. So that's not straightforward and also subject ongoing reinforcement research how to ensure safety during learning, but then also during application. Another topic which we not covered, but it was really interesting is imitation learning. How can we train an agent with respect to some baseline agent, for example, a controller or a human expert to mimic such kind of behavior, for example, for warm starting our a new agent, which is then maybe pre-trained based on already available agent and model-based controller or in human experts and then for example tries to find better solutions after that warm starting based on imitation learning. The topic of exploration obviously we have covered that in the lecture and also in the exercises however we have basically covered simple exploration strategies which are based on randomness. So we added random process noise, we took discrete actions with some probability distribution, epsilon greedy type of actions and stuff like that. So these are, let's say, simple exploration moves which are applied or applicable to a general kind of problems. However, they are not really structured, they are not really intelligent. And in that way, we cannot state that this kind of exploration is really optimal, especially if we also put it together with that previous subject of safety, right? So if I'm maybe in a safety critical environment and I'm close to some state action constraints and I'm picking exploration actions by random, then of course we have some likelihood that we move to some state or action combination which is safety um, critical and which is violating our safety constraints, right? So that doesn't make much sense. So how can we introduce exploration strategies which are more intelligent and also allow us to faster find optimal policies compared to these standard exploration uh, randomness as we have discussed it through the lecture. Also, we have only discussed reinforcement learning algorithms and agents, which 
can be considered single agent algorithm, right? We just had always like one algorithm, which is learning to do something like a centralized agent, um, which is um, evaluated with respect to some application. However, of course, there are also applications which have a distributed nature, for example, distributed energy systems, where it makes sense maybe not to have one central agent, which is trying to control an entire complex distributed energy network, but maybe a multitude of agents which uh, try to just control maybe single elements of that energy, right? And then they have to interact with each other, try to communicate with each other and try to solve and control or prediction problem together. So this is something which we not really discussed so far, but as I said, for distributed um, problems like distributed energy systems, of course, that is a, a very natural question. Ask how can we extend these kinds of algorithms which we have discussed in the lecture to the multi-agent case. Last but not least, meta reinforcement learning is about bringing reinforcement learning to the next level in terms of problem complexity, because here we do not want only to learn one specific task like driving one car in a specific driving situation, but we want to learn a distribution of tasks. So for example, driving an entire different fleet of cars which have different driving characteristics and different driving scenarios. So in the city, in the freeway, on the highway, and so on. So this is really extending the problem space, so to speak, and find solutions which are able not only to perform well on a single task, but on the entire distribution of tasks, of course, is uh, again a more challenging task as what we have discussed so far in uh, during that course and also during the exercise. However, also this outlook here with these five topics, um, as, as these are topics which go beyond this uh, basics of reinforcement learning course, um, this outlook is just a selection. It's not a complete uh, outlook to all possible topics which are currently researched in learning. So you're also um, invited to uh, search for topics which might interest you and, of course, uh, make yourself familiar with them. However, if we really summarize what you have should learn in that course, we can state that you should be now familiar to model problems, environments by Markov framework, so Markov decision processes, for example. You should be able to use tabular um, reinforcement learning techniques to find exact solutions on small discrete data action spaces. You should be able to find appropriate approximate solutions if the discrete or uh, if the discrete action space is very large or if it's a real continuous problem space using function approximation. And also to apply the theoretical solutions, the theoretical algorithms, not only on pen and paper, but also on a practical programming level. As already mentioned, this is an introductory course to reinforcement learning. So we basically scratched only the surface Although there might be really a lot of different topics we have covered, this is really just the basics uh, of reinforcement learning. And um, if you're looking into the scientific literature, you will also see that inside the scope of reinforcement learning, optimal prediction, optimal control, you will see that on a daily basis, new algorithms, new problems being discovered. We had also a uh, focus more or less on controlling technical systems, um, especially during the exercises. However, reinforcement learning, of course, is not limited to controlling technical systems. Um, it could be completely different systems, non-technical systems, but it could be also to find optimal policies which have nothing together with classical control engineering. For example, a problem could be also to find an optimal policy for advertisement strategies in social media channels or whatsoever. Of course, we could also model this kind of problem with reinforcement learning and try to find solutions to that. But uh, that was something which we not really covered. And so here the, the point is, okay, could be also covered with reinforcement learning. We didn't really look into it because this focus of this course, especially of the exercise, has been oriented to classical control engineering 
problems. Of course, if you're interested in more work on reinforcement learning, especially in the field of electrical power systems, please do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, we as a research group are uh, active on this field and we also, for example, offer final thesis uh, for, for master and bachelor thesis. So if you're interested in that field, please let us know, contact us. And we are happy to uh, integrate um, students into the project group. Being said that, uh, a final thanks for attending this entire lecture course, for attending the summary. I hope you have learned a lot and will also make use of the learned content in your future studies or maybe in your job life. And I hope you enjoyed this lecture course. I uh, wish you all the best for the future and hope to see you soon. Bye bye.